A new Governor General has been appointed, but unlikely to get the blessing of the opposition, a party he led in Parliament, before changing allegiances. The Legacy Committee celebrating Dave at Louise reports on its activities. Kimani Melius with the West Indies on the 19 cricket team in New Zealand and She Naturals encouraging women to keep it natural. This is the reality show, the first edition for 2018. We will eventually evolve into a live show over the next few weeks so we can have an interactive engagement. But first, let us take a quick look at the local papers for the weekend. First, the Voice newspaper, its front page. The focus is on the newly opened Harbour Club in Rodney Bay. The owner reportedly pleased with St. Lucians who worked on the project. And then on the inside, reaction to the appointment of the new Governor General, Neville Snack. Not an overwhelming national embrace. It appears to be quite a divisive appointment, placing events in April 1987 back into sharp focus when Mr. Snack crossed the floor, leaving the Senate Labour Party he led as opposition in the House to become a Foreign Affairs Minister for the United Workers' Party. And the back page, 2018, and the big sporting events, among them the Under-19 ICC Cricket World Cup. Our very own Kimani Melios is in there. We'll chat with him later in this programme. But for now, the new Governor-General is in focus. The swearing-in ceremony is on January 12th. He becomes the seventh Governor-General of St. Lucia. Again, the events of 1987, also featuring in this front page of the Mirror, is a detailed piece on the new Governor-General, the back page featuring sports and a reminder of nominations for Sports Awards 2018. The Star newspaper features a government house already vacated by Dame Pullet Louise. After calling it home for two decades, Neville Snack is the new occupant. Like the Mirror and The Voice, the star is flashing back to 1987, and that is going to be fodder for some time. That political decision in 1987 is back in the spotlight. The difference this time, social media, it can be unforgiving. And the star's back page, a photo by Rick Wayne, and best wishes for 2018. As we said earlier, the new Governor General will be sworn in on Friday. One of the final official functions of Dame Paulette Louise was a farewell parade staged by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. What was interesting about this parade was that it was put on by the female officers within the force as their tribute to the departing Governor General.
March pass in slow and quick time. On the right! And to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in general, I, I wish you all the best. Um, you will grow, I'm sure, from strength to strength. And will be, not very soon from now, not only the envy of disciplined um, forces in, in, in St. Lucia, but also the envy of disciplined forces in the region. So thank you so very much and do keep it up. Thank you for the honour. Well, this afternoon I want to commend the Commissioner and his um, senior officers for putting this um, ceremony in this afternoon. When he discussed it with me, I, I gave it my blessings. And I think that um, the GG really deserves a sending off like this. I think the GG has really blazed the trail. Um, and this unit will remain as a testimony of what she did for us as, as our Governor General. The tribute to Dame Paulette Louise started a while back. It was organized by a legacy committee headed by Dr. Winston Paris. My name is Dr. Winston Paris. I'm the chairman of the Dame Paulette Louise Legacy Committee. And I'm here accompanied by the co-chair, Mrs. Joyce Destang, and our treasurer, Mr. Carlton Glasgow. The purpose of this meeting is to deliver a press briefing to give an account of the activities, the goals and objectives of the Dame Paulette Louise Legacy Committee. We, I think at this point I will turn it over to the co-chair, um, uh, Mrs. Joyce Destang, so she can tell you about the 20th anniversary celebrations. The events to celebrate her 20th anniversary took place in September and this took place over a period of two weeks. Um, one of the most outstanding events and one that we want to highlight is what took place in Labry. We had a mass for her one Sunday morning and at the end of the mass we also had a road naming ceremony and this road is also the road on which her house still stands and this is where the ceremony took place and any of you who go down to library will see the road named Dame Poulet Louise. Apart from library, we had an ecumenical service at the cathedral. There was also an academic evening and our guest speaker was Dr. Didicus Jules. On that evening, two scholarships were presented, which Dr. Paris mentioned. They were given to two students uh, attending Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. 
uh, following this, uh, the, an evening or two later, we had an artistic evening. Thanks to Dr. Adrian Auger and his group, there was a mass at the Mount of Prayer at Kubari one Sunday morning, and this was followed by a breakfast. She also paid a visit to her namesake school, Dame Paulette Louise, and the whole school was in attendance, as well as members of the Legacy Committee and some invited guests. The Events such as this uh, call for, for funding, and the major fundraiser was a gala dinner which we held on the 19th of September in 2015. The ticket sales um, realized from this was $74,400, and we got some donations and interest on a fixed deposit which we established. So we had a total income of $77,775 to fund all those things that you've heard about. The dinner itself, uh, the expenses associated with that dinner were $10,300 so dollars. So in, in effect, we had $64,000 with which to, to fund uh, all, all these things. The major expenses uh, were the, uh, the library events, uh, which cost us in the region of $24,647. Uh, and as, in, as you heard, that, in, that involved the renaming of the road and the iconic Laborian Center, which I think most Laborians are quite pleased to have, and they, and they look to expanding it. The, the academic evening, which was held at the uh, financial center, was not a major uh, cost center, but it, uh, it did cost us $900 to rent that facility. The artistic evening, um, which was held at the Johnson Center, uh, we spent $12,950 to do this. At that artistic evening, or rather at the academic evening, we, we, we had a, a very well put together documentary, a TV documentary. Um, I don't think the producers would like us to call their names, but I will, until Calabash TV. And um, that cost us a mere $5,000, which I thought was very generous. The Dame Paulette Louise Scholarship, um, which you heard about, cost us in the region of $15,380. This was this is being totally and completely handled by the National Community Foundation. And um, we just provide them with the funds upon their presentation of, of the costs involved. And they have, they have projected the costs, and we know exactly how much that is going to cost us. Uh, $15,380. We've paid some of it, and the rest will be paid in due course. So these are the major components of our expenditure. A full media brief will air on Calabash TV during this week. This is The Reality Show. Still ahead, Kimani Melius and a tour of duty with the West Indies under-19 cricket team. This is Our Reality, Calabash TV.